showdown time at the Wick. The Titans and Lynx kick it to the end. The Falcons kick off their home season with a close one. The Saints come marching in, in the wind as well. Indian Hills comes in swinging. Enough said. The Reavers taking their cuts against Marshalltown. Everybody hits. We're members of the Reaver softball team and Bluff Sports Zone starts right now. Yeah! Hello, I'm JJ Davis and welcome to our latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. Now the high school soccer season is in full swing, so let's kick it with our first neighborhood street fight. Lewis Central, bloodied lately, having lost its first four matches, comes in swinging against Abraham Lincoln. And now it's no secret, both teams have been struggling these last few years. So a win, any kind of win, is in big order. Number one sportsmanship. If it's not allowed in the classroom, it's not allowed here. The Lynx and Titans shake on it for the first time on the new field turf at Wickersham Stadium. Now, LC with a number of set pieces from the get-go. Connor James sends it in. The home team here with the cross, chances few and far between. High and way outside. Brendan Figueroa of Lewis Central uses his head. And it hits the post. The junior again. Figueroa, four shots on goal. Scoreless at the break. Abraham Lincoln's dropped four of its last five to the Titans. Second half, more of the same. James right on target. The visitors out shoot AL 11 to 2. The sophomore from the other side, Lynx keeper Javier Huerta, gets a glove on it. Abraham Lincoln counterattacks. Neither team can find the back of the net. It's a photo finish. Less than seven minutes to go. Connor James, another free kick. And that's the difference. LC shuts out AL, one to zip. It means a lot after what we've gone through this season, after the game against this team last season as well. Um, and just the history between the two schools is an insanely um, huge game for both teams. Surprised it went in? A little bit, but then when I saw when I I struck it, knowing I was going far post, trying to hit the goal. So if it went in, it went in. If someone headed it, in, it went in. I just want to make sure that ball got in the net. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. It's a tough way to lose. You know, he he uh, he put the right kick on it, right over Javi, right in the back corner. You know, that's something you know only few people can do. And you know, he put he put it right on frame. The outlook on the season is very positive. We're we're young, but we're experienced. You know, my midfield's made up of three club players, play at the highest level. My defense is young, but they're solid. They know what they're doing. Um, we just got to find the goals this year. I feel like you can get over the 500 mark because it's been a rough stretch the last couple of years. Yeah, it has been pretty rough, but um, with the newer coaches and with the newer players and the better talent that we have, I think we can make that um, 500 mark and we can beat it. You feel like you're tired of being on the losing end, it's time to make some noise? It's definitely time to make some noise. We've had a rough, rough couple past years and this is, we feel this is our year. I press and that's what... The sky's the limit for us. I mean, city championship, conference championship, and the state tournament is is absolutely our 100% goal there. Who's out? Our And then there's St. Albert. Now the Falcons are coming off a fourth place finish at the state tournament. But this year's team is young. What, 13 to 20 guys underclassmen? But to me, St. Albert is still St. Albert. Here's IDUB TV student, Ben Smith. St. Albert boys take on Denison Schleswig in a matchup that features wind gusts as much as 50 miles an hour. Second minute of the match, the Monarchs, Danny Aguilar with the free kick, it's in the net. The Monarchs finished with six shots on goal, while the Falcons finished with 11. Now it's the home team's turn. Charlie Donaldson has a free kick. Keeper Guadalupe Estrada is able to make the save. 34th minute of the first half, Rodrigo Barajas booms the shot up into the wind and it's long gone. 
Next possession, Monarchs on the move. Nelson Lopez scores his first of two goals in the match. Away team up to zip. Final minute of the half. Charlie Donaldson crosses it. Jake Hubbard heads it in. Falcons now just trail 2-1 at the break. The away team leads 3-2 in the second half and is trying for more. The free kick gets pushed by the wind and just sails over the bar. Nine minutes left in the match. Charlie Donaldson another set piece, but the keeper again makes a save. Final seconds of the match. Falcons try to squeeze in a miracle goal, but the horn sounds. Denison walks out of town with the win, 3-2. Well, it's a long season. Uh, last year we started off slow. We've got uh, we've got 13 new kids. They're workers, but they're awfully, awfully young. They're freshmen and sophomores, our new guys. So. Uh, for these guys to get the experience playing against a quality team like Denison, uh, it can only help us long term. Any goals for the season? Well, obviously, uh, it'd be nice. Uh, we always set the goals to uh, win the conference, be city champs, obviously, and uh, get through substate. That's our third season, is that substate, and uh, make it up to state and make some noise up there like we did, uh, did last year. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Ben Smith. Thanks, Ben. St. Albert then loses three at the ADM tournament. The Birds, one and four. TJ, winless. The Jackets, just two goals in five games. Lewis Central sits at one and four. Hey, AL, just that one loss to the Titans. The Lynx, their next three matches at Wickersham Stadium. Keeping it outside, the Reavers look to make mincemeat of M-Town. But next up, the ladies kick in a new season when we come back. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. Never forget this date last year. The Saints wash out of the state tournament in the first round and afterwards say an emotional goodbye to their dynamic duo of a coaching staff. And so it's a new beginning up on the hill. Or is it? I mean, the legend's gone, but his right-hand man could not let go. So nothing really changes. It's business as usual for St. Albert. Here's IDUB TV student Dylan Lindbergh. New coach, same old story. St. Albert hosting Dennison Schleswig in its home opener. Just six minutes into the match, Miranda Beasley scores to put the Saints up 1-0. The wind continues to blow and the home team begins to blow away the Monarchs. 12th minute, Nicole Hildebrand sets up Beasley right foot far post. The senior scores her third of four goals for the game. St. Albert up 3-0. Saints keep it coming. Maggie Wettengale gets it by the goalie. Home team takes a 6-0 lead into the break. Second half, more of the same. St. Albert scores here in the 63rd minute. The Saints would add another goal late as the home team wins 10-0. I used to be the guy to just show up to the practices and, and help run those, but now it's a lot more, uh, you know, out of uh, out of soccer uh, stuff. A person has to get ready for, but that's just part of the job. Losing two tremendous players last year, we're trying uh, to get back to where we were and get, maybe be the first team in Council Bluffs. 
hopefully all of us will make it there and get a win down there up at state. The biggest thing I think is, is what we're implementing in practice, they're actually seeing it work and, and they're starting to get a little better vision of the game and uh, I'm hoping when they uh, get into a little tougher tougher situation they see that and stay with it and, and you know work the plan. St. Albert's next six of seven games are on the road or a neutral site. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Dylan Lindbergh. Next to Thomas Jefferson. First, the good news. The Jackets have their top four scores back. Now for the bad. They're just sophomores. In fact, just about the entire team is made up of underclassmen. Here's IDUB TV student Brandon Taverdi. On a cold Monday night, TJ faces off against Sioux City East in its first game of the year and the first time playing at the new CB Stadium. Second half already up 2-0, Brooklyn Malco receives a beautiful pass and scores. The Raiders up 3-zip. Moments later off the corner kick, Keith Garibay uses her head and scores the Black and Orange's fourth goal. To close out the game, Junior Anna Graves bobbing and weaving her way for the goal. Even though the Jackets lost 5-0, the team is still optimistic for the rest of the season. I think we're all pretty close, even with the sophomores and freshmen. So I think as an entire team, we're going to band together and be able to carry each other, no matter what our grade level is. Since most of our girls, like even as starters, we have multiple freshmen starting and sophomores starting. So overall, I think once we just get the communication rolling, we'll be good. As a head coach, how can you make a young team kind of grow up as the season goes along? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, you just got to keep them believing, you know, keep them like, I, my worst fear was to come and get beat bad. And too many people look at the scoreboard and just assume that, oh, they must have got killed. But I would disagree with that. But you just got to get the kids to believe it because if they believe that they're fine. The players even gave their thought on the new field. It's so beautiful. I'm so excited. It's awesome. <laughs> it's fun, but when you fall on the ground, it kind of sucks because you get turf in your face. Thomas Jefferson earned its first victory of the year against Tri Center, winning 3 0. The Jackets are now 1 2 on the year. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Brandon Taverdi. Thanks, Brandon. Now, Thomas Jefferson wins its last match, shutting out Tri Center 2 0. Abraham Lincoln sits at an even two and two. Sixth ranked Lewis Central knocks off top ranked Heelan in Sioux City five to two. Could this be the Titans year? Ditto for St. Albert. The Saints 20 goals in just two games. Spring ball continues for the Reavers. Who's going to pull the trigger next season? Meanwhile, back on the ranch, two words, Indian Hills after the break. For more than a quarter century, thousands of Southwest Iowa athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sportsman. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury. They even partner with the surgeons at Ortho West, ensuring you get your own exclusive roadmap back to action. Methodist Jenny Ed Sportsman invites all Southwest Iowa athletes to its free walk-in clinic, open every Saturday morning, August through October. Jenny Ed Sportsman. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Your future is here at CBTV. You're in the game. You take the shots. It's your story. The Media Studies Program at Iowa Western. Real Reality TV, starring you. For more information, go to iwcc.edu. It's been an emotional season for the Iowa Western softball team. I mean, new coach at the last minute, losing streak. But the girls have rebounded and are starting to show glimpses. And so into the box steps a good litmus test, 19th ranked Indian Hills. Now the Reavers split their two game series 
four days earlier in Atumwa, but that was four days ago. So it's once again grow up time. Iowa Western comes in having won 15 of its last 20. First inning, Matty Boyd bangs a base hit, and then Lindy McIntyre rips a rope to left. Jade Lee, who doubled in the first run, scores. Boyd comes around, and just like that, it's 3-0 Reavers. Members of the Big Blue Wrestling Team getting their happy on. Now the Warriors come swinging back in the second. After a throwing error makes it 3-1, Cheyenne Dubois grounds one through the hole. Visitors cut the lead to one. Now the Hills ties it in the third, bottom of the inning. Adrian Goki with the single. Matty Boyd comes home, 4-3 Iowa Western. Top of the fifth, the Warriors' Casey Duffield doubles to left, later scores on a sack fly, 4-4 after five. First batter, bottom of the sixth. Goki pops one to left. Drops it, overall five E's in the game. Tracy Edwards, her second hit, dead center. Home team with 11 overall. Carly Arndt, come on down, 5-4 Reavers. A sack fly makes it 6-4, winning pitcher. Alex Hagen goes six and two thirds, but loads the bases, two outs in the seventh. Ellie Ponce then gets the ground out, five to three. Iowa Western outguts Indian Hills, six to four. It's nice when you can uh, compete with everybody in the region, but um, you know, here at Iowa Western, it's not about competing, it's about winning. So um, that's our goal, that's the focus of this one. It's, it's good to get game one, but it doesn't mean a lot if you don't get game two. Back and forth, one mistake here and there. Yeah, it's a nail biter, but um, we finished well. Like Coach said, the only people that can beat us is ourselves right now, and uh, we can come back to second game and win it. You come in with the bases loaded, how tough is that? Um, I mean, it's always a tough situation, bases loaded, only down by two, two outs. Um, I just gotta come in and do my job, you know, get a ground ball and get an out for my team. I think we have a tendency to um, get the first win and then kind of just rest on it and like, yeah, we played really well that first game. It means we're going to play well the second game. So um, just staying and winning every single pitch, um, whether it's the first game, second game, whether we won the first one, lost the second one, it's kind of irrelevant. Just keep winning pitches, and then you win enough pitches, you'll win a ball game. And you get to chow down on some cookies afterwards. The Reavers take a bite out of number 19 Indian Hills in the first of two. <laughs> Dance fever at the Iowa Western Sports Complex. The Reavers ready for game two with the Warriors. Emily Brown knocks in the game's first run in the first inning. Indian Hills grabs a quick lead, but it's short-lived. Bottom of the second, Tracy Edwards slices one the other way. Gets by, Alex Hagen scores, and the pitcher Ponce comes around. Big Blue takes a 3-1 lead after two. Then in the fifth inning, Lindy McIntyre smokes one to the gap. Matty Boyd hustles around. Iowa Western four runs on four hits to grab an 8-1 to one lead. And he's missing a good game. The Warriors wake up in the sixth. Shannon Finneran belts one to left. The visitors four runs, three hits to cut the lead to three. Seventh inning, Emily Brown watched just inside the foul pole. A two-out, two-run shot for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Suddenly, the Reavers lead just 8-7. to seven. Starter Ellie Ponce, hanging tough, baby. The sophomore then gets a big K to end it and get out the brooms. Iowa Western holds off Indian Hills 8-7. to seven. In between games, we talk about winning pitches um, one at a time, and if you do that, you're going to win a lot of ball games. And so, um, you know, we won enough pitches. Obviously, it was 8-7, a little closer than we wanted it to be, but, um, you know, we won enough pitches to get it done, and moving forward, we got to win more. What's it mean to sweep Indian Hills? It's pretty awesome. Um, we've been excited for this game for forever. We always look forward to Indian Hills, and we always try to get a bunch of people to come to our games, which they did, so it feels pretty great. It's a big deal because, I mean, especially for the sophomores, it was, it was a big deal for them because last year they lost them in the championship game, and, you know, it was, a, it was really nice for us all to get it together as a team win for, for them especially. It's good to get wins. That's great. Um, you know, leading the conference, that's great. Um, but it's all about April 29th. We've got to be playing our best ball then, so we got to continue to get better. Better indeed. The Reavers take over first place in the Iowa Community College Athletic Conference. Iowa Western's on the move. Reaver family! Got the sweep! Now we got the Brews out. And how about the Iowa Western baseball team? And you know we hold this program in such high regard. It has such high expectations and high standards that it's all or nothing at all. And so it goes this season. 
The third-ranked Reavers split their first two games with Marshalltown on Saturday. Game one Sunday, first inning. Jared Gates steals second, and he doesn't make it. Second inning, Iowa Western right-hander Matt Lloyd picks off the Tigers' Logan Holtz. Bottom of the second, Jack Morak, a two-out base hit. One walk later, Eric Mingus rips one to left. Now Morak gets on his horse and is coming home, and he's hey. Next batter, Nick Menken chops one deep in the hole at first. Now he's safe, one run is in, Minkus tears in. And let's face it, gang, Iowa Western's figured it out, up three to zip. On the hill, Lloyd goes five, strikes out six, and gives up just four singles. Check this out, the home team, a three, six, Four, double play the hard way. Fifth inning, now up five to nothing. Eric Mingus comes around and drills his second hit. Fair ball, the Reavers 12 hits overall. Another comes around and it's eight to zip. One sack fly later, Luke Morgan, his second hit of the game, just can't reach it. Mingus scores and Iowa Western mauls Marshalltown in five, 10 to nothing. I thought we did a great job of um, really laying off his off-speed stuff. I mean, he had some unreal numbers coming into t to, uh, today. So for us to be able to do that, I was really proud of our game plan and uh, how our guys executed it. What was working for you today? Uh, I was located in my fastball, and then uh, my curveball was really working today. Do you feel like you were in the groove, so to speak? Yeah, yeah, I felt like I really settled down finally this year. Haven't really gotten there yet this year, so to do it today was really nice. Some guys struggling, some aren't, but we're playing as a team real well right now and just keep winning and hope things do well. It's about momentum and the scoreboard um, matters at the end. It's about it's about the momentum up to that point. And I thought we did a good job with that and Lloyd did a great job on the, on the uh, mound. The Reavers kicked the Tigers around again, shutting out M-Town six to zip in game two. Now Big Blues chewed up the Cats. Iowa Western sitting pretty, having beaten Marshalltown 22 out of the last 23 times they played. Up next, our play of the week. I'll give you a hint, it's outside. Hey, who could have the inside track at QB? On the other side. Okay. It's decision time. I want to experience a four-year college in two years. I want to live on campus, but get to my career faster. I want to get started now. Find your path at iwcc.edu and get hands-on real-world experience. Start now at Iowa Western. You know, I didn't know this, but the Reavers have started maybe one or two true freshmen at quarterback in their short but illustrious history. It's true. So why start now? Spring ball continues. Now, I remember hearing about Andre Nunez last year, and then I watched him practice. Talk about an arm. What a gun. Now, everything I'm seeing and hearing this season points to Andre Nunez being the guy at the QB position next year. Now, if the kid from Cali could just stay healthy. Four quarterbacks are currently on the Reavers roster. Sophomore Brock Larson played in eight games last year and led the Reavers to a graphic Edge Bowl win. Andre Nunez here threw for two and ran for one at Coffeyville before being knocked out the next game at Butler for the rest of the season. Andre came in last year as the number two guy uh, and then he got hurt in the second game. Brock has a bunch of game experience. Um, you know, and I expect both of them to improve. 
Nunez is throwing lasers with the number one unit. Now the redshirt sophomore has the strongest arm by far, but needs to master the X's and the O's as well as the Jimmys and the Joes. Now we got to put it all together. You know, I mean, um, he's got to he's got to become a better football player, a better quarterback, understanding the system, knowing where to go. That was the thing. Uh, I came in late last fall and. Uh, I got to play with, but not, not how I wanted to. So this year I got, I got the time and I really got it down there. You got a lot of options every play. You know, you got two to three options where to go with the ball every play, so that's good. Yeah, and I mean, that's what we want to find out from all those guys. Who's going to be the leader? Who, who is the team going to rally around? Who's the team going to, um, you know, look to when th things aren't going well? And that, that comes from taking care of the football, encouraging one another, and knowing the system. He's a great quarterback. We thought he could be the guy last year, so we definitely believe in him and think he can be the guy this year. I feel it. You know, I'm confident in myself, and I think the other guys are confident in me too. So it's all competition. You know, I like the competition, but I'm here for the spot, and that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's fun, man. I've been waiting for this time a long time. You know, ever since that, that I got I got hurt the second game, so I'm excited. Everybody is this time of year. 2016 spring ball continues for the Reavers. And will Andre Nunez be the starter against Arizona Western on August 27th? Well, the California kid is throwing down the gauntlet. And the only question is, can anybody catch him? <laughs> Turning to golf, the Iowa Western men's team did it again. And in extreme weather conditions. Of course, I'm talking the wind. The Reavers win the Northwestern College invite. Hey, not bad when you consider 40 plus mile an hour winds make conditions so unpredictable. Ninth ranked Iowa Western wins by three strokes over the host school. Hey, Nick Louie ties for individual honors. The super sophomore comes in with a 72. And now it's time for our play of the week. Bought to you by the Univista University. Lewis Central huddles up for its annual grudge match with Abraham Lincoln. Less than 10 minutes to go. Scoreless dogfight. Connor James with the set piece. And it finds the back of the net. LC shuts out AL, won the zip. And super sophomore Connor James with our play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by the Univista University. Call 712-749-1990 to register today. Okay, so not a bad week, huh? Now, if the weather could just cooperate a little bit more, I mean, if Mother Nature could just make things a little bit warmer, you know what I'm saying? Now remember, as always, to keep it here for more news and information in your community by tuning in to the Council Bluffs News with Zach Harper Blunt. And so, for this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around.